Hi, and welcome. I will introduce you to some of the basic terms and concepts of research in this video. First, we will learn the following terms, dependent variables, independent variables, and extraneous variables. In any research, we are interested to find out how one variable is related to, or affected by other variables. For example, we may want to answer the question whether the blood pressure of Indian is higher than the other ethnic groups. We may also want to answer the question whether blood pressure can be lowered by exercising regularly. This could lead to the research on how blood pressure is related to or affected by race and the amount of exercises one does. In this example, blood pressure is the dependent variable. Dependent variable is also called response variable. Race and amount of exercises are the independent variables. They are also called factors or treatments. We also know that blood pressure is affected by age, gender, diet and so on, but are not covered in the study. These are the extraneous variables. We need to control these extraneous variables so that any differences in blood pressure are solely related to race, or are due to the amount of exercises, and not caused by the extraneous variables. Analysis involving one dependent variable is called univariate analysis. Independent variable has two or more levels. Level is also called group or treatment. For example, in Singapore context, race has four levels or groups, Chinese, Malay, Indian, and others. Gender has two levels or groups, male and female. Here is another research example. We are interested to find out if male students perform better than female students in GCEO level mathematics. We are also interested to know whether students who attempted more past 10 year series GCE O level maths exam papers perform better in O level maths papers. This could lead to the following research. What is the dependent variable in this study? What are the independent variables in this study? What are some of the extraneous variables that are related to, or, can affect the dependent variable? Next, we look at two research methods. The descriptive methods and the experimental methods. Observational studies, case control studies, surveys are all examples of descriptive research methods. The limitation of descriptive method is that it can only show that variable A and variable B are related or associated. It cannot determine the cause and effect. It cannot determine whether changes in A is due to B, or, changes in B is due to A. You must understand that association is not causation. It could also be due to a third factor, an extraneous variable, that is not considered in the study. For example, a survey found that people who smoke more also tend to drink more. A survey is a descriptive research method. We can only say smoking and drinking are related, or associated. We cannot say smoking more causes one to drink more, or vice versa. It could be due to a third factor, stress, an extraneous variable. A person under stress may smoke and drink more. In order to show cause and effect, we have to use experimental research methods. We have to carry out the following four steps. Step 1, randomly select the subjects for the experiment. This is to address the issue of external validity. That is, the ability to generalize your study to other subjects and other situations. Step 2, manipulate the levels of the independent variables. Examples will be given in the next slide. Step 3, and the most important of all, Randomly assign the randomly selected subjects to the different levels of the manipulated independent variables. Step 4. Control the extraneous variables. Steps 2 and 3 are the two steps that distinguish between descriptive and experimental research methods. Random assignment and controlling the extraneous variables address the issue of internal validity. That is, the differences observed in the dependent variable is really caused by manipulating the independent variables. We use our earlier example on how blood pressure, which is the dependent variable, 
is related to or affected by the two independent variables, race and amount of exercises. To do the experiment, we randomly select subjects of different races. We are unable to manipulate race because they are fixed. In Singapore context, we have four races, Chinese, Malay, Indian, and others. We are unable to randomly assign subjects to the different races because a Chinese belongs to the Chinese group, and Malay belongs to the Malay group. So for the variables blood pressure and race, we can only show relationship or association, not cause effect or causation. This is descriptive study. We can manipulate the amount of exercises the subjects get. We can have a group with no exercise. This could serve as the control group. We can have another group that exercises once a week, and a third group that exercises three times a week. It is recommended to limit the number of levels or groups for each independent variables to two, three, or maximum four levels. We then randomly assign subjects to the three groups. And we control the extraneous variables such as age and gender. That is, we ensure that the three exercise groups have about the same number of male and female subjects, and also have about the same mean age. If we observe any differences in blood pressures among the three groups, then the differences in blood pressure must be caused by the different amount of exercises the groups received. In this case, we can show the cause and effect. Amount of exercises causes blood pressures to vary. A study can be considered as an experiment if at least one of the independent variables can be manipulated. The example on blood pressure can be considered as an experiment because amount of exercises can be manipulated. Some may consider this example as a quasi-experiment because not all the independent variables can be manipulated. Again, we use our earlier example on the performance of male and female students in the O-level mathematics, and how it is affected by the number of past 10-year series exam papers they have attempted. We can use descriptive as well as experimental research methods for this study. Explain how you would conduct a descriptive research study and an experimental research study. List one obvious and practical problem you would face in conducting the experiment. Thank you for watching the video.